Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Um, I hope you all are taking very best care this evening. For those of you who don't yet know me, my name is Nina, and I'm Curator of Programs and Interpretation at the Williams College Museum of Art. It is my pleasure to introduce tonight's workshop with Anna Moriarty-Lev and Kay Shattuck. Tonight, Anna and Kay will be sharing a bit about their respective practices and then lead us through some exercises. And if you do want to follow along with those exercises, we suggest grabbing a piece of paper and a pen or pencil or anything you love to draw with in case you don't yet have something at the ready. And just as a heads up, um, this workshop is going to run approximately an hour and a half. Um, I love seeing where folks are tuning in from. We love um, welcoming everyone uh, from all over. Hi, Ezra, um, who's coming in from Menlo Park and um, Andrea from Bennington, Vermont. Um, and just as a heads up, the music that you all were listening to earlier um, was a song Orfeo by Andrew Bird. It was picked by our wonderful participants, um, Anna and Kay. Um, tonight's program is part of Cures for Strange Times, a weekly art and wellness workshop series that will be taking place here on Zoom every Thursday evening in January at 5.30 p.m. Over the next four weeks, a different pair of art and wellness practitioners from our incredible local Berkshire community will come together to offer participatory experiences that center reflection, play, making, and embodiment as forms of learning and being. We'll be sharing some links for more information on the final two programs in the series in the chat. Um, so look out for those, and I hope you can join us. Tonight's program and the additional uh, programs in the series will be recorded and will be available on the museum's website after the series ends. Uh, also throughout the program, if you have any questions or you just wanna share something, um, please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A feature. And um, the chat and the Q&A you can access through the bottom of your Zoom navigation bar. There will also be opportunities throughout the program to share your work with the group if, if you would like. This is totally optional. Right now, all of you are, um, are muted and your video is off, but um, Kay and Anna will prompt you um, at those times where you are welcome to share. And um, we'll ask you to use the hand raise feature at the bottom of your Zoom navigation bar um, to let us know you'd like to share. And then we'll, um, we'll make you visible and we'll let you be able to share your thoughts with us. Um, so with that, I'm thrilled to hand things off to my wonderful colleague, Ann Kennedy, who's WICMA's program coordinator. Um, she's going to introduce Anna and Kay. So um, Anne, please take it away. Thank you, Nina. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Anna Moriarty-Lev is a cartoonist and painter who lives in Williamstown, Massachusetts. She's a graduate of Eugene, Eugene Lane College at the New School in New York City, where she concentrated in creative writing and studied dance, theater, and literature. Anna has contributed to the museum through her mini comic Art Bitch, which is a series of commissioned zines created in response to many of our rotating exhibits. Her work has been exhibited locally and can be found in Spiral, Bar, Spiral Bound, Lev Hardway, and Instagram. I'll put links to those platforms in the chat. Kay is a registered board certified art therapist and a practicing artist who also lives in Williamstown. She has a BFA in fiber and material studies from the Cleveland Art Institute and earned her master's degree in art therapy at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. She's the founder of Artworks, a community art studio located in North Adams where she teaches art classes and workshops for kids and adults. In addition, Kay practices art therapy at Bennington Project Independence in Bennington, Vermont, and is an adjunct professor in the Graduate Art Therapy Counseling Program at Springfield College in Springfield, Mass. And I will add uh, a link to her website in the chat. And I now pass it off to Anna and Kay. Good Hello, day, everybody. <laughs> I'm Kay. And I'm Anna. And we are super excited to be here with you all tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'll give you a little outline of our evening. We are each going to talk a tiny bit about our respective practices. Um, we'll share how we sort of um, began collaborating and why we fit so well together. And then um, after that, we will be getting to an exciting part of our um, art experiential. So 
that is that is um, what we'll be doing tonight. Anna, do you want to talk a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be doing some exercises tonight. Um, and we've said that this is an adult workshop. I know some people might have kids with you. Um, it's just because we serious topics come up when we're doing um, autobiographical comics and the world is kind of a tough place right now. So we're all thinking about a lot of serious things. So if you have kids with you, that's totally fine up to up to parents discretion. Um, but some adult topics may come up while we're um, sharing work, um, but nothing specifically in these exercises is in any way inappropriate. Um, uh, this, as Nina mentioned at the beginning, this is being recorded and will be shared on the WIPMO website. The part where people are sharing their work, however, will not be included in that. So anything that is shared tonight will remain confidential between those of us who are here. Um, yeah. All right, so um, as I mentioned, my name is Kay Shattuck and I um, am an art therapist. So I thought, you know, being that this is a workshop, I should start out with a little um, description of what art therapy is. And really art therapy is um, using art as a way to process and understand uh, the, world around, the world around us. You know, many people um, go to therapy and they, they talk and definitely talking is included in art therapy, but um, some people find that making art to reflect and really um, understand what's happening with them is, is their preferred mode. So um, I'm an art therapist and I use art to help people um, really understand themselves and, and sort of what's going on. My path to um, becoming an art therapist, as Anne mentioned, I have a BFA and it was during my undergraduate time that I really realized that personally I was using art to process my own life experiences and trauma. Um, and I found, you know, over and over again, it was always so helpful to understand and reflect on things that had happened through art. And I thought, you know what, this is, this has been so invaluable to me that I would really like to bring this um, to other people and share, share this with people. So fast forward, um, I went and I decided to get my master's in art therapy. Um, so I lived in Chicago for a while. I, I had a full-time job as an art therapist. Um, and we moved to Williamstown and for Williams College. My, my partner has a, a job at Williams. And I really used this time to sort of really craft um, uh, positions that, that are sort of work the best for me. And I, I just, I realized that I um, enjoy having a private practice. I also like to work um, in the community organization, Bennington Project Independence. Um, I'm really interested in teaching. I love, um, you know, talking to art therapists who are in training and, and really helping them sort of develop their, um, their narrative and, and what they'd like to do. Um, and also, I think it's really important um, to be a practicing artist. So I sort of have four part-time jobs that I've cobbled together, but that really works well for me. Um, you know, as an art therapist, I think it's super important to make art myself to sort of, you know, practice what I preach. Um, and really, you know, I've always known this about myself, but um, the past, you know, 10 months living uh, in a pandemic and with political unrest, um, I've sort of, it's become more apparent than ever that making art is such an important piece of who I am and how I show up and process things in the world. So that's why Anna and I are here tonight, um, you know, this, I love the title of this workshop, Cures for Strange Times, because these are indeed probably, not probably, definitely the strangest times that I've ever been alive in. Um, and, you know, something that Anna and I were talking about, um, experiencing life in a pandemic, this is from a therapeutic standpoint, um, we are all participating in a collective trauma right now. We are all experiencing a trauma. Um, COVID is a trauma, like we mentioned, the politics, uh, that's very traumatic. Um, and the thing, you know, trauma researchers have um, come to the conclusion that you can't fully know the effects of trauma until after the trauma is over. Um, so I, I really think that it is important to sort of get a jump start on 
on processing what's happening to us right now um, to in order to be, you know, as as mentally well as we possibly can be during this time. And, you know, it is COVID and it's, it's affecting everyone in very different ways. Um, some to a greater extent than others, but the thing is no one is is making it out um, sort of unscathed by this experience. So um, it's really our hope tonight that you will be able to take away um, the format that we're using tonight, which is autobiocomics. Um, and we're hoping that you'll be able to sort of apply this to your own life here with us tonight. And maybe you'll, you'll really fall in love with the whole process and you'll continue to do that. But um, it's really our hope that you will um, find this useful and really, um, you know, find a way to begin to process what's, what's happening to you and to our community at this time. Awesome. I love hearing you talk about your work, Kay. This is so fun. We've been working together for... Um, a, a year and a half now um and it's so nice to like hear more background from you um so i'm anna moriarty lev and i'm a, a cartoonist and a painter and um, i also make hand painted clothes um i have been making art my whole life my mother was a painter um and even before she was a painter, our life was always filled with art. So that's always been a part of, a big part of who I am. Um, and I started drawing comics as a kid and just kind of continued to do it just for myself um, throughout my life. And when I was in college in New York City, I realized that cartoonist was a job that real people had and it was possible to make a life somehow that way. Um, so I eventually made myself to, got myself to Williamstown, Massachusetts. Um, and I have been, I make comics that I started, started painting um, just a few years ago as another form of expression. Um, this painting on this screen here is uh, me with my two little kids. I'm also a mom of two little boys. Um, I really came into making autobiographical comics when my mom was sick with cancer. Um, she got breast cancer when I was a senior in college and I was taking a comics class at the time uh, that was just um, like the one comics class we had in, in, uh, in school and I started bringing home my supplies and the comics I was reading for class uh, um, when I would come home for visits and my mom was like okay I'm gonna get those supplies too and I'm gonna make comics with you because she was already a painter but um she decided to make comics about her cancer diagnosis and her initial treatments and everything. So we kind of started doing that together. And I started making comics about her um, and she would make them about what she was going through. And um, eventually during, as her cancer left and came back and got worse, I was back living at home with her and just decided that I needed to for myself make comics about everything that was happening. I took my journal to the doctor's office and they would just kind of record in a visual way what was happening, both for myself to keep a record of it. And also just, it was very emotional and I didn't really know how to process what was happening. And so I kind of just sketched these little diary comics as we were going through this. And then later when I looked back on it, um, I have found it to be very helpful to have that, um, kind of in the moment processing to look back on and, and started sharing them and have connected with a lot of other people um, who either have experienced cancer or some kind of loss um, and have found that to be extremely rewarding to connect with people through that. Um, and so in a, while I was pregnant with my first child, so in 2015, I started teaching an autobiographical comics class um, and I've taught uh, several different workshops with adults and teenagers and even with some kids. Um, and then came to start working with Kay a year and a half ago, which was just so much fun because we really um, connected right away about the way we both think about using art and healing. Um, it's something I thought about a lot. So we started our class with artworks, which started in person. Um, but then when COVID happened, we decided eventually after we'd been in it for a little while, we decided to start a Zoom class, which we do monthly. 
which has been really, really great. And we've been able to have people participate who are not local. Um, like tonight, I think we've got people from all over tonight, which is really exciting. Um, so yeah, let's talk about our yeah, let's talk about our collaboration. Yeah. Um, something that I really love about Anna's work that really sort of draws me to her is um, as a therapist, I'm really interested in a theoretical approach called narrative therapy. And that is um, externalizing the problem. So I feel like so often we have these uh, maladaptive stories that we tell ourselves. Um, and they're the, I'm talking about the tapes that we all have. Um, that they're playing and we don't even realize. I mean, they're not, they're often not saying um, sort of the best things, you know, it's not nothing terrible, but just this way of being in the world. Um, and so narrative therapy really works to externalize the problem. So instead of saying, oh, it's me, I'm terrible, I should have done it differently. We, we try to figure out the context in which um, the problem is happening and, and what are the situations, what's contributing in the environment to the problem and we take it outside of ourselves um, and put it put it out there so it it's easier to understand and it doesn't mean we're a fundamentally um, flawed person it just means that we are living in an environment where things happen and there are many reasons why things happen and it's not always our fault so i really love this approach in working with my clients and i think that um, comics just really lend itself to, um, to this way of thinking. You know, it's a great way to process what's happening. And I love um, how you told me about your mom, Anna, and how, or you, should, you should tell the story, but um, how she felt like an active participant. Yes, she, um, one of the reasons my mom started making comics about her cancer experience um, was because it, it was really hard for her feeling like like a victim, like something was just happening to her and that she couldn't control it. And so she started bringing her camera to the appointments and taking reference photos and like sketching things and just starting to create all this art about it as a way to feel like an active participant in what was happening to her so that she was part of it and she was doing something rather than something difficult just happening to her and feeling kind of helpless. and. I think that's how it feels for me, making these kinds of comics about my own life, about what I'm experiencing, just feels like, oh, I'm doing something about it, even if it's, it may seem like, oh, I'm just sketching in a journal, but it is doing something and it changes the way my brain thinks about what's happening and it does become more active. And then taking the next step of sharing on Instagram or, or however else, um, connects with others, which brings like a whole nother level of, of participation into it. Totally. And I, I love too that with um, the autobio comics, you know, so often things happen to us and in that moment we're not, um, we're not processing right away. We're just sort of, we're reacting to things and we don't have that time to reflect. Um, and I've taken like I was going to say hundreds, but that would be an exaggeration, you know, 20 workshops with you um, ish by now. And I, what I, what's happens over and over again is Anna's workshops really give people the space to revisit things that maybe they haven't thought about in years. And this can be, you know, happy memories, tough memories, sad memories, all the memories, um, and really give them sort of that active participant role again, um, even if they didn't feel like they were an active participant when the event actually happened. I think reflecting on it through art, through the comics, really can help to reshape and um, create some of these more um, positive narratives and also just more realistic. You know, I think that so many times the stories that we tell ourselves are just not all that true. Um, there's always two sides to every, you know, I, when I teach narrative therapy, I, I, I teach it, um, I have my students think about a coin, right? So there's one side of the coin and you can flip it over and there's another side. And I, I often think that um, as humans, we're, we're really prone to seeing just the same side over and over again. And I really like to flip it over and, and see what's on the other side. And Anna's work just really um, does that so well. And we always tell people, 
um, you know, you're going to laugh, you might cry. And it happens, I don't know, Anna's just like very gifted in this way that she, um, it's, it's very like gentle and it's not, I don't know, just the way, the way you walk people through these different parts of their life story um, is really remarkable. So we're really excited to um, sort of bring this to you tonight. Um, yeah. What have I left out, Anna? I think that's it. That's a great way, like, great way to describe it. Really excited. Um, yeah, so we're going to do this tonight. And we teach a monthly workshop. And just if you're ever um, interested, our next one is next Tuesday. And we do them every month. We usually post on Instagram uh, to share when they're happening. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Or I think we want to pause for any questions. Yeah. If anyone has any questions or or thoughts on anything that we said, we'd love to, to start a dialogue with you all. Oh, and you use the hand raise feature, I think, um, if anybody wants to ask a question and Nina will call on you. Okay, so uh, APS, how do those workshops compare to the one tonight? Well, um, the workshops that we do through Artworks Community Art Studio, they are two hours long, so um, 7.30 to 9.30. You know, obviously um, this workshop will be about um, 45 to 50 minutes abbreviated. Um, also, I love that there are tons of people here tonight um, at Artworks, our workshops. I think the most we've had was maybe like was 10 or 12. 10, mm -hmm. So they're a little yeah, bit more really intimate. Small, more an intimate group get to know people um, and, and develop a, a community, which I think is a, another great part of making art. Another important part is finding that community. So we really try to carve out our communities. Yeah, and in community. those workshops, yeah, people are sharing and everyone's kind of responding and talking. And like tonight it will just, you know, we'll, I'll say the exercise, Kay and I will each share our own work and then we'll call on maybe two people for each exercise to share work, but we obviously don't have time for everybody to respond and stuff. So that's another way it will differ from that our regular workshops differ from tonight, but it's similar types of exercises. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so other... Ashley says that she loves the idea of taking back hard narratives. What a beautiful, productive way to respond to poops that life throws at you. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. It's really empowering to sort of revisit and be like, you know what, actually, I've been telling myself that I was a slug for X, Y, and Z, but really, like, I did a great job. Like, or, you know, I was responding. Yeah. Maybe you didn't do a great job, but you were responding. There were reasons why you were doing, um, why you responded the way you did. Actually, super important. These reasons are, are super important. Um, I find also that it's surprising what comes up. Like I don't, I write these exercises ahead of time, but I never think about what I'm going to do in the moment. And then, so I'm in the moment with the rest of you. And even I get su so surprised um, about what, what comes up and how it affects me. Do we have another? Someone is wondering if you've read um, Roz Chastis. Graphic. Oh, yes. Love Raj Chast. Okay. <laughs> She's so great. I mean, so she does comics in the New Yorker, and she also has a couple of graphic novels. She has one that she wrote to her daughter about New York City and one about her parents and taking care of them as they age. Her work is really beautiful. I saw someone ask, do you need to know how to draw? And the answer is no. Well, the answer is oh. twofold. No, you don't need to know how to draw. But also, I believe everyone knows how to draw. I firmly believe everyone's an artist. And the main rule that I have for class is that you're not allowed to say you're bad at drawing because it isn't true. Because everyone is good at drawing. We all draw when we're little kids. It's one of the first instincts we have to do is like draw. And I'm watching my two-year-old and four-year-old and the way they just do it. And then somewhere along the line, someone tells us we're not good. And part of why I love teaching adults is because so many people want to get that back. Um, because they've lost it somewhere and we all still have it. And I love seeing people get that back. Um, so I know that some people in the audience um, who I know from BPI, um, we have a sign that we hang in the art studio and it says, I accept what I'm doing. 
And that doesn't mean that it has to be good. It just means, yes, like we are all here. There are no wrong answers and we are accepting uh, what we're doing. So that's sort of our theme always. Um, I just saw someone asked, is there a way to find out about workshops if you're not on Instagram? And um, hey, are they posted on your website? Uh, what? The, when we, our workshops, like the dates, they are, we usually put um, them on Facebook too. Right. We do put them on Facebook. Um, you know, last time I, I don't know, I can't say for sure that they're on the website. Um, but maybe we should start an email list or something. <laughs> we usually just put it on Instagram because it's so easy, but I, not everyone's on there. I, um, That's a good point. My community. Yeah, um, we have a question, I think, from Janet, who has her hand raised, so I, I'm happy that I need Janet, and if you want to speak your question, just one second. You can talk now, Janet. Oh, I think she's still on mute. I see her, but I see her box, but she's still on mute. Oh, Janet says she didn't mean to raise her hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Janet. <laughs> Hello, Janet, and welcome. <laughs> um, and that, that totally, that's totally fine. I will lower your hand now. So <laughs> thanks, Janet. All right. Anyone else before we sort of move into our experiential? And if you think of something, you know, as we go, please feel free to, um, to ask us. Great, and we'll take that email list suggestion. Um, I think that could be a great idea to have an email list going about when we do our classes. Um, and just a quick thing too, after this, there will be a survey um, that you'll receive. Um, both it'll, I think it'll pop up on your screen. You'll also get a link to it in the follow-up email. And in there, there's a chance to share anything else um, with us at the end of the survey that you might want to. If you are interested in being part of an email list um, or getting more information from Kay or Anna, feel free to let us know in there and I'd be happy to pass that, um, your email address or whatever, your contact information along if, um, if anyone's interested and if that's okay with you, Kay and Anna. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. Get in touch. All right. So shall we get into some comics exercises? All right. Grab your... Um, Pencil, your paper. Grab your stuff. So for anyone that I'm assuming everybody knows what comics are, but for anyone who doesn't, or just to give a very basic description, comics are just images and words working together. There's no real rules. All it is is that there are pictures and there are words. Sometimes comics don't even have words. They're just images, um, but usually there's at least some words. But you do not have to structure these in any specific way. Like it has to look like a newspaper comic strip or it has to look like it does in a comic book, the, it can really look any way that comes into your mind. A big part of what we're doing is, is helping you find your voice through this medium um, to express things that are in your mind and in your heart right now. Um, so what we'll do is I will set a timer for each exercise so that we can um, you know, have a time limit and be able to get through um, each of these. And when the timer is, goes off, or I'll, I'll usually say when we're about halfway through, and then I'll go ahead and share mine first, and then Kay will share hers, and then we'll ask if anyone else would like to share. And I think we'll probably take two, um, depending on, on how time is moving along, but we'll probably take about two um, sharers. Um, and when you share, you'll get called on by Nina, and she'll enable video, and we're just going to hold up our comics to the, to the, um, to the screen, it'll look the correct way to everyone else. It'll look backwards to you, but it'll look correct to everyone else. You'll see when, uh, when we do it. Okay, so the first exercise for tonight, I always like to warm up with self-portraits um, because I think it's important to look at ourselves and interact with ourselves, um, who we are in this moment, tonight, right now, not who we were five minutes ago or yesterday, but to really interact with who we are right now. Um, but for this self-portrait tonight, I would like you to do a self-portrait in four panels. So by panels, I just mean like four images. You can draw four boxes. You can just draw four images, however you want to do it. Um, 
So a self-portrait in four panels, whether that's four drawings of your face, whether it's drawings of different parts of you, whether it's more abstract. Um, and what I want you to think about is how are you? How are you right now in this moment? And like really truly not like, oh, I'm totally, I'm fine, I'm great. <laughs> like what you would say to someone on the street, which do we even do that anymore? Because it feels so like off to say, oh, I'm fine. I never say that anymore. I don't know about you guys. Um, uh, so really think about how you are right now in this moment. I'm going to set a timer um, for five minutes. So it's pretty short. This is a little, little warm up one. So in five minutes, I want you to draw a four panel self portrait um, with or without words, it's up to you. All right, and go. We're just about halfway through.
about 30 seconds left, so starting to bring these to a close. All right, the time is up for this one. I'll go ahead and share mine. Obviously, anyone who is still working can keep working when we share as well. Um, so, okay. How am I? Tired, happy, nervous, excited. And it's my hand that says, I am here. And then the final one is me with thinking about a, a healed, a healed heart. So that's my self-portrait four panel comic. Kay, do you want to share yours? Um, so mine is, um, I'm just feeling like I'm doing a lot of different things all at once and I sort of feel like I'm never doing them. Um, quite with an, as much attention as I'd like. So this is me making lunch for my kids, um, being on meetings on Zoom and um, sewing while also trying to um, process everything that's going on in our country right now, which feels like takes a lot of attention. <laughs> I, I love that you divided it into four panels, but then it's like one image with all your hands like stretching into each one. Beautiful. Thank you. So we'll go on to the next, um, the next exercise. Thank you guys for sharing. I love the, the bravery of, of people um, opening up with us here. This is really wonderful. Okay, so for the next exercise, um, I want you to close your eyes if, if you feel comfortable doing so. Think about a time in your life when you felt a line, a before and an after, a time, an event, something that happened when you felt like your life divided in two and it created this division where you have your life before and your life after. And there's this thing in the middle that happened that created that and you were changed. I'm sure we all have a lot of times like these, but think of one, the first one that comes to your mind. And now open your eyes and hold on to whatever you were just first thinking about um, and make a comic about it. <laughs> so we're gonna take a little bit longer for this one. We'll maybe, we'll do um, seven minutes instead of five. Um, and you can make one image, multiple images. Yes, I can repeat that. Um, so think of a time in your life when something happened that changed you, that created a before and an after, where you knew that that thing changed your life forever. And who you were before stopped and you became someone else. So there's a before and an after. Um, and it can be a small thing, a small thing that changed you. It can be a big thing. Um, you know, any thing that sticks out to you when I say, think of a time in your life when there was a before, there's a before and an after, whatever the first thing that comes to your mind, and then make a comic about it. So just as long as there's drawings and there's some words, it's a comic. Um, so I've got the timer ready to go here. So everybody get your stuff ready to go. And uh, if you have questions, of course, feel free to, if I'll, I think I'll just see it if you type them in the chat, but um, let's, let's go for it. Great.
So about two and a half minutes left. I missed a halfway point there, but about two and a half minutes left. Someone just asked what the prompt is because they missed it. So it's drawing a comic about a time um, when something happened and you changed and your life was divided into before and after. And so just about uh, 20 seconds left, um, but anyone who's still working can, can, keep, can keep going while we share. And maybe some of these exercises are things you can um, finish or make into a more detailed thing later. If you are make something you're like, oh, I really like this. I want to finish it more. Um, you can definitely do that. The timing, uh, the reason we time these um, is really so we can do more in our short time. And also because I think when you have a short time, it forces you to like think less and do more. And you just go with whatever the first thing is that comes to your mind and you don't worry about it being good or perfect or whatever. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, definitely many times in my life that have a before and after, but a really big, one of the first ones for me was when my mom died. Uh, when mama died, a line was drawn. Um, the ground felt solid. 
Um, one that I can never cross. And I just kind of wrote, um, uh, now I know we're all just floating, uh, unraveling. Heart is heavy, dark, empty, cracking, unmothered. Um, but both wear striped shirts. So, yeah. So that's my before and after comic. Worked it with the striped shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to share yours, Kay? Um, so mine is, um, here's me with a hole in my heart, and then um, here's me with my heart full um, with my dog. So there's a before Dusty and an after Dusty. Oh, I love that. I love that you made his sweater red and your heart red, like that, like connecting visual is so simple and so great. So we have two more of these um, different exercises to do. Um, so we'll have a couple more chances for sharing. All right, so for this next one, um, think about one year ago. So January, 2019, uh, very different time, I think for all of us. Uh, who were you one year ago, January, 2019? Where were you? in January 2019, one year ago. So who were you then and who are you now? And so for this one, everyone's gonna do two panels. Um, so you can divide your paper in half and have two panels like one on top of the other side by side. Um, so it's gonna be you one year ago and you now. Uh, who you were, where you were, what you were, and then who, who where, what are you now? Um, but the, the catch is one of these you're going to draw normally with whatever your dominant hand is and the other one you're going to draw with your opposite hand. Um, so if you're right handed, you'll switch to your left hand or vice versa. If you're ambidextrous, that's awesome and they'll probably both look very similar, <laughs> but uh, most of us are, have one dominant hand and the reason we're going to do this is because it's uh, really good for your brain to mix it up. Um, and draw with the other opposite hand. Um, it can be great if you are cramping up from doing a lot of paperwork or drawing a lot and you're just like, oh my gosh, my, my main hand is like cramping up. Switching to your other hand is really great for, for relieving that. And uh, also I got this from my mom who was a painter when she, she was right-handed, um, but after chemotherapy, she developed neuropathy in her right side and could no longer paint right-handed and had to switch to painting left-handed and said that she felt more at home painting left-handed than she ever had in her life um, being right-handed. And I've always thought that was so interesting and that experience of her switching hands. I think she made better work when she switched hands. Um, so anyway, so you can choose which one you're gonna draw with which hand. But again, the prompt is, who were you one year ago and who are you now? Two panels, um, draw one with your left hand and draw one with your right hand. Um, again, draw them however you like. Um, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do that seven minutes again for this one. And start whenever you're ready. And feel free to type questions into the chat if you have any questions. And if I don't, and if I don't notice them, um, Nina, let me know. <laughs>
just a correction I think I said January 2019 and January 2020 you all know I meant one year ago was January 2020 and now it's 2021 I got mixed up there I just realized that I said that <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's still 2020 <laughs> seconds left so bringing it to a place of closure okay 
So time is up. I'll go ahead and share mine. Um, okay. So <laughs> here's me, January 2020. Um, so my son, Felix, sweet Felix, started preschool. He was 17 months old. Uh, his brother, Giles, was already going, and he was three and a half at the time. And this made it so that I could actually um, have work days uh, with both my kids out of the house, which was amazing and great, but also I felt a lot of guilt about, about it because Felix was so little. Um, I was suffering from uh, postpartum depression and um, PMDD, like premenstrual dysmorphic disorder, and had, had a bad experience uh, with the wrong medication. And then January 2021, which I drew with my left hand, um, I have my pink hair, which is a dream I've had for a long time. Um, I'm on the right medication and somehow, even though it's been a year and when I feel, first think about a year ago, I'm like, oh, I was probably like so happy and carefree, like January, 2020, but actually I'm so much happier now somehow. And I'm so much stronger and I don't know that I'd really put together until this moment that I'm actually happier than I was a year ago. Um, truly. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, this side is, I spent a lot of time in my car last year driving to Springfield and Bennington and to my studio and I felt like a carefree, I don't know, a caterpillar came to my mind. <laughs> um, and then, um, so instead of the steering wheel, it's my house. I feel like a little bit more frazzled, um, but I, I too feel stronger, wiser, also more scared, but um, also more determined. And now I'm a caterpillar carrying like a gigantic um, backpack. <laughs> Oh, I really like that. I like the caterpillar thing. I don't know. It's just I'm really feeling a caterpillar right now. So go it that. works. <laughs> it works. I like it. Beautiful. That is interesting to think about how much time spent in the car before versus now is probably so different for so many people. Crazy. All right. So we're going to do one more exercise. Um, and so we'll just take probably about five minutes to do this last one. And then um, a couple people can uh, can share. Um, so as Kay mentioned before, what we're all going through right now is a collective trauma um, in many different ways. Uh, there's things that all of us are experiencing, like the pandemic is all over the world. Um, our whole country of the United States is going through um, some very difficult and, you know, uh, upheaval -y kinds of times right now. Um, other countries I'm sure are as, are as well. Um, and then there's other things that are smaller collective traumas, like maybe just you, your community is experiencing something specific, um, the people around you or people who work in the medical field are going through their own collective trauma that they're experiencing. And, um, you know, parents are going through a collective trauma like with raising kids right now and doing homeschool and trying to figure all that out. Teachers, there's all kinds of collective trauma that we're experiencing. Um, and that can bring us closer to each other. Uh, but it can also bring us, make us feel more isolated somehow. So I want you to each make a comic um, about how you feel closer to others right now during whatever part of the collective trauma that you are experiencing and how you feel further away. So a comic that expresses both those things. How, what ways do you feel closer to others and what ways do you feel more isolated? Um, does that make sense? I think. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to jump on the chat. But yeah, so we'll just take um, five minutes and you can do this as one image, multiple images, however it's coming to you. Um, but during this collective trauma, how do you feel closer to other people and how do you feel further apart? And go.
or halfway through the time. Okay, just a few seconds to go. All right, I'll go ahead and share. Um, okay, so I kind of drew a bunch of different things. Um, so this is me. Uh, my arms, my arms want to hug. See you later. I love you. After a masked distance walk with a friend. Uh, so strange to hold my arms down, holding them down against my side. A vibration kind of in my armpits, the urge to hug them. Sitting by the river apart together feels so close. All the ways we talk and text, someone next door or across the world, I reach out more. My world has gotten smaller, my social circle, my geographical radius. So like where it was here, now it's just this. So that's what I, that's what I came up with for that. I really, really love the armpit vibrations, I feel like. Don't you feel that whenever you're about to say goodbye to somebody and you're like, wait. <laughs> Absolutely. Totally. Um, mine sort of reminds me of yours. Um, so this was my circle before and this is my circle now. Um, and so we are potted with a family and I feel like we are have gotten so close um, we've had to talk about so many things that um, people don't normally friends don't normally have to talk about um, and I've also feel um, like my two best friends from from growing up I'm closer to them now oddly even though they've they've always lived far away um, but I feel like this time has brought us closer and then my circle um, that I miss so many people so much it hurts and then I put sometimes because sometimes I really appreciate just having a tiny circle, um, but a lot of other times I miss people. Definitely relate to that so much. Oh yeah. Um, I just want to um, 
Thank you both, Anna and Kay, so much for leading this beautiful, beautiful workshop. I know we are, um, we are past seven, so um, just want to be mindful of everybody's time, but this was, I followed along too and really enjoyed um, drawing. I haven't done any drawing like this in a really long time, so this was wonderful. And thank you so much to everyone who shared their thoughts and participated. Um, if Anna and Kay are willing to stay on for a couple more minutes. I'm sure you guys have some closing remarks. Um, if you want to stick, stick around, please do. And if you do have any further questions for them, feel free to, um, to ask and hang out. We'll hang out for a few more minutes. And otherwise, have a beautiful night, everyone. Take care of yourselves. And um, please uh, keep, stay creative. I hope you follow and keep, keep making beautiful things. It was wonderful to see everyone's work tonight. Yes, thank you, everybody. It was wonderful to be together. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for uh, including us in your work tonight. And like whether you shared or did it on your own, thank we're honored to be part of the space with you. And whatever it ho hopefully it brought out some some good or helpful or just like nice to get your hand moving drawing tonight. Um, I loved doing it with all of you and knowing that knowing that we're all in this virtual space together. Um, I find it really uh, inspiring and wonderful. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. I know. Yeah, it's amazing to actually that one of the things I was feeling in this moment, and the reflection on feeling isolated or feeling connected. This is something that made me feel so connected to so many people. Um, so really, Anna and Kay, it's really beautiful work that you're doing. And um, it's wonderful to hear that you have a workshop workshops like this that you're doing um, in a regular basis. So I hope others will, will co consider joining you. Definitely. Um, yeah. Feel free to get in touch if you have questions about the, the workshops and also feel free to tag us in, on Instagram. If you want to share any comics that you made tonight or that you're making in the future, we would love to see them. Beautiful. All right. Well, if we don't have any questions, um, I think we might, let you guys go eat dinner, be with family. Um, but we are so grateful to have everyone here and just a huge thank you again to Anna and Kay. And again, um, for those of you as you're leaving here um, and getting the follow up email, there will be a survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, if you want to be in touch with us, um, you can email the museum at wicma at williams.edu. That's WCMA. And um, you can also contact us through that survey form. Um, Thanks so much. Uh, we hope you might consider joining us for other programs soon. And Anna and Kay, we can't thank you enough for tonight. Um, we're so excited to continue working with you, hopefully in various ways in the future. So thank you all. Take care. Thank you, Nina. Bye. Thank yeah. you. And thank you, Wikma, for facilitating this for us. Our pleasure. <laughs> Bye.